How can you embed 3GS projects like this in Webflow? There are many ways of integrating 3GS in Webflow. However, let's say you have a lot of 3GS code and you're exceeding the custom code limit in Webflow. So what do you do in this case? Well, the solution in this video, which is to embed your 3GS projects in Webflow, is what we're gonna cover. And the solution is also great if you wanna place a background, a 3GS background that is interactive in the back of all of your HTML elements in Webflow. In our case today, we're gonna to be using Visual Studio Code. Maybe you have another preference of another uh, tool of another compiler, but that's what we're gonna be using in this video. But just a quick note, in this video, I'm not gonna teach you how to do 3GS. I'm gonna teach you how to embed your 3GS projects in Webflow. But if you wanna learn 3GS, then I recommend you this uh, YouTube channel called Design Course. I'll link it in the description. Very good if you wanna just get introduced to 3GS. But if you wanna really go in depth and learn 3GS from A to Z, then I recommend this course. It's a paid course, not by me. It's offered by another guy, his name is Bruno, and he created this beautiful 3GS portfolio where you basically need to drive this car to discover his different projects. So if you wanna learn 3GS, I would really recommend that project. So that out of the way, let's continue to the video. So let's say this is your final project, and that's how it looks right here, and we can play with a lot of things over here, like the position of, uh, of basically the light, the intensity of light and etc. And you wanna embed it as it is in Webflow. First, we will upload the whole code into GitHub. Second of all, we will host the code on Netlify. And third, we will embed it in Webflow. So let's start by uploading all of our code into GitHub pages. And that's where I'm gonna start dividing uh, into sub steps. So now that we are uploading all of our code into GitHub, we're gonna have to start with the first step, which is adding a dist folder in uh, our project over here. And you can easily add a folder here by going into your project and clicking on add folder and write dist. Now, why are we doing this? Why do we need a dist folder? The thing is that GitHub is not able to reference all of the assets in the static folder. So we have to put it in the disk. So we'll basically come and copy this texture folder and we'll just put it into the disk folder. And here we have it, and that's it. And again, if you have more assets, like for example, you are maybe using some imported models from Blender, Cinema 4D, whatever software you're using, you're gonna have to copy them and put it in the disk folder. The second thing we have to do is to go into the package.json and add a new script. So here I'm gonna just copy paste it and you can copy it as it is. And don't worry about it, all of that will, all of the commands and all the lines of code I'm using are gonna be down in the description. So as you can see here, we just added, and don't forget the comma here, we just added a new script here, which is GH pages. Now, the third thing we have to do is to run that script. So we have to basically go to our console and in our case here, I'll just create a new one so that you see how we can create it. So a new terminal and make sure you are in the directory, uh, in the right directory of your project. And then you can write the npm install gh pages. So this will basically install the script we just added. Now this is the moment when you're gonna be like, what the f is gh pages? And basically it's just a script that allows us to publish all of our code into a new branch in GitHub called GH pages. That's all that it does. And I'll leave more documentation again in the description. So the fourth thing we have to do is to create manually a repository in GitHub. So we can do that by going here in your GitHub profile, click new, repository name. In this case, I'll call it hunted house tutorial and let me just write 3GS. Yeah, oh, here we have it. Then you can leave everything by default. Uh, doesn't really ma matter if you're private, uh, you can do it public if, well, for private, you have to, I think, pay for GitHub. So uh, everything else you can leave as a default. I'll keep it public. So create a repository. Now, as we see here, this is our, the link of our repository. And this is important that we keep this in mind because we'll need it pretty soon. 
there are obviously many ways of adding your, uh, your code into GitHub. You can use the desktop app or you can use the terminal. In this video, we'll be using the terminal. As you start messing around more with Visual Studio Code, you'll see that using the terminal is usually even faster than using the, the desktop app. And um, in my personal experience, it caused some problems. The desktop app, I mean. So first, we can start by running the npm init command. npm init. Then we we'll basically just set everything by default. So just enter, 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 then yes. Then we can run the command git init. This will basically initialize or reinitialize uh, your git repository. Then we run the command git remote add origin. And then we'll need the link uh, of our repository. So we can go into our um, GitHub, copy the link that you can see here, go back and paste it. Click enter. Uh, after that, we have to say git add. So git add, then space dot, very important. And now just to make it easier for you, all of those commands are down in the description. This way it's easier for you to follow along and not make typos. So basically after that command is done, we say git commit space minus M, it's not a minus M, but I call it a minus M. I just always forget the name. Either it's a slash or anyways, the point is I, minus M. <laughs> so then you have to name your commitment. So you have to uh, give it a name. And in this case, we'll just say first commit. That's how I name it. You can name it whatever you want. It will basically commit our code into our repository. Then after that, we can basically say git push. We can say origin master and that will push it to the master branch. So now it says it's done. And if we go to a repository and if we refresh it, we'll see all of our files has have been added. So the next step here will be to come here and uh, basically create a new branch, GH pages. If you remember, that's the script we've added not long ago about it all of that will all of the commands and all the lines of code i'm using are going to be down in the description then you can go here and say create branch and here we have a new branch gh pages now that we created our branch we can go back and we have to deploy our gh pages script so that it pushes all of our uh, code into that branch so we can do that by saying uh, npm run deploy and they press enter. All right, here we have it. So here that we see that after we refreshed it, it's, uh, we can see that the items were updated. And you can see here our HTML, uh, uh, index HTML, and also all of our textures. So now technically, we are ready to see if our website is properly published on GitHub. And we can basically see that by going to settings pages and choosing the GH branch. And I would suggest you to refresh to make sure that your link is green here. Click on that link. And we kind of have our project um, here and almost working. As you can see, there is something missing, which are basically all of our textures. And in this case, we didn't, we didn't have any custom imported models. So you won't see them here either. But if we would have certain import, certain impo imported models in our project, you would still not see them here. Now, this is a very annoying and weird problem. So the thing is that I let, let me tell you something. It's you might think like it's weird, but ignore that. And uh, the reason why is because we're going to fix that in the second step. So now that we completed the first step, which is to uh, upload all of our code into GitHub. The second step would be to host all of that code in on Netflify. So I would suggest you to go ahead and create one account. You don't need to uh, get a paid account. You can get a free one. It's completely fine if you wanna host a few projects. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our GitHub code into here. And how we're gonna do that is basically saying add new site and then import an existing project. Then here, we're gonna select GitHub. It's gonna basically uh, connect with GitHub and tell you like authenticate, authenticate yourself and etc. 
So you do that. And after that, after you're done with this, it will tell you pick your repository. And we are going to select a repository we just created. So here we have it. I selected the, pro the repository you want to add here. Then you have to make sure it's GH pages. Okay. If not, it will not work. So this, you can leave it blank and you just click deploy site and that's it. Now we just have to wait. And uh, as you can see, site deploy in progress and we just have to make sure it's completed. Let's just refresh that. It's still in progress. Let's just wait a few seconds and it's published. We can now go ahead and see the site. And as you can see here, all of our textures, they're working. The normal maps are working. Uh, specular maps, I think we have some here that are working. Everything is working. If you already made it into, into this step and you didn't have any problems, then congratulations. If you had some problems, you can leave some in the comments and I will definitely help you out with uh, fixing some of them. And might as well that we're here. If you are having some very good value out of this video and you're finding it useful, then a subscribe and a like to this channel would be also useful. Okay, so now we've reached step three, which is basically embedding what we've just uh, hosted on Netlify on Webflow. And what we can do now is to create a Webflow project. And in my case, I'll create one here and I'll call it Haunted House. Okay, so Haunted House, mm, I'll just call it 3GS. Here we have it. So create site. Now, what we can do because we have uh, an embed, uh, a 3GS embed that takes the full screen. So what we can do is we can make a section and uh, we'll name it 3GS section, obviously name it whatever you want. And uh, we'll make it full width, so 100% width, and we'll make it 100% VH. So it's completely stretched horizontally and vertically. So now what I'll do is that I'll add an embed element inside. Here, we just have to embed what we, uh, what we just had in uh, Netlify. And we can do that by just copying the link of Netlify. And actually, uh, you can just copy it as it is, but a better practice would be like to rename your project just to stay organized. So let's just change site name and I'll change it to uh, to haunted houses house 3gs here we have it and now let's just come back we can come back into webflow i have a code here and basically we just have to embed it as an iframe so to do that here is the code already from down in the description that you can use so you just paste it here and as you can see here CRC, that's where you have to paste your link from Netlify. So copy that and we'll paste it in here. Here we have it. And actually, believe it or not, but that's it. Then save and close. And as we can see here, HTML embed element is not stretched completely. So we'll have to make sure that its height is 100% VH as well, or we could have actually, no, make it a percent. So now it's fully stretched and let's just rename the HTML embed element to 3GS embed. And let's go see our website. And as, was, as we can see here, we perfectly embedded a 3GS project in Webflow and it's fully functional. And the thing is that if, for example, you wanna change something, for example, you want to move the house to the left or to the right, you can go back to your code, make the changes, and you can redo basically all of uh, the steps we just did to push all of our code to GitHub. And if we just push it back to GitHub, it will automatically update all of our code here. So the changes are going to be live. So it's pretty easy to change, uh, to make changes once it's published on the Webflow as well. So we did it. We embedded our 3GS project on Webflow. However, using iframes is not always a good idea. If you have a lot of iframes on one page, it can dramatically slow down your website. Now, if you use one like we do here, there is no problem at all. The speed is pretty good. And 
uh, considering that it's a pretty immersive experience we have here if we add a loading bar that takes two seconds it's it's not necessarily a problem however if you have a lot of embeds here that might be an issue so I did a video here that explains you how you can optimize the speed of your iframe this way if you use a lot of them on your website you know how to control them and you you make sure they don't negatively impact the performance of your site and the user experience stays amazing.